Hey everyone, I am Price, and today I am going to explain to you how to automate your automation using AI. Make sure to stick around until the very end to discover detailed steps and insights in our chat GPT tutorial. Firstly, open your browser and search for the make.com automation platform. Now let us discuss its pricing. Make.com differs mainly from platforms like Zapier and Pipedream due to its cost structure. It has five different plans. Free, Core, Pro, Teams, and Enterprise. The free plan is $0 with 1,000 ops per month and includes free features. Next is Core, which is $9 per month along with 10,000 ops per month. After that, the Pro plan is about $16 per month and the Teams plan is about $29 per month. Scroll down and this diagram provides all the necessary information. This platform has native integration with only 1,000 apps, compared to Zapier, which supports 5,000 apps. It is not a major problem if you can integrate other apps using API documentation. However, Zapier becomes a little bit more effective when dealing with native integration. Now go to the top right side and click on the Get Started Free button. After that, fill in the necessary details and create your account. Once you are on your dashboard, the upper section shows your operations. Here, as you can see, this is the amount of data transferred or operations in use. Operations are similar to tasks on Zapier, helping monitor your usage within a plan. Now, the controlling operations are connected to the flows you create because each flow you perform is linked to a specific number of operations determined by the tasks you do or automated in that flow. Let us move on to the next operation, which is Teams. You can add multiple teams here, and it is a powerful feature. Unlike Zapier, where teams start at $130 a month, this free platform gives you teams right from the start. In the user section, it shows Webcam AI. To add more users, you'd have to go for a team account on Zapier, which costs more than Make.com. Next, in subscription, you will find your plans if you want to upgrade. This is where you do it. Now everything else here isn't relevant. So let us explore the left side and understand what is there. Here, Teams is like a closer look at the Teams tab we saw before. In scenarios, these are your workflows. And the good thing is, you can organize them by adding folders. For example, you could name one test. This would be a great way to categorize, especially if you have clients or specific operations you want in a particular folder, such as marketing or customer support, to keep your flows more organized. Here, you can manage active scenarios, inactive scenarios, and concepts, probably for experimenting with the API and trying out different things. Moving to templates, here you can find example workflows from the community. They are usually simple and you can get ideas from them. They are useful if you are not sure how to work with a specific app. For example, you can search for Shopify and it will show you ready to use templates for your project. For example, if you want to use a template, choose the Start Guided Setup option and then create a new scenario from the template. Once I have the scenario, I need to provide access and connect my account through the API. Now, let us go through the side section and the next part is Connections, which shows all your natively integrated connections. I have Printful, but here is where you would set up connections like Google Docs or Gmail. It is also the way to access the APIs of these apps, like their starting point to the API documentation. Once authorized, you can easily send emails, create drafts, and perform tasks without making separate requests. It also makes things simpler by using webhooks and post requests to access the API with authorization directly. Now let us go on to the next section, webhooks. Webhooks are essential on this platform, particularly when compared to Zapier. This is because the platform here is not as universally integrated. Webhooks are links that can either send or receive data and also enable you to perform specific functions across different software. Next, we have keys. Here is where you generate public and private key and store your data. You can also add your device to your Make account. Then there is data storage. 
But keep in mind, there are limits. With a free plan, you can only store up to one megabyte of data. Next, we have structures. This is a little bit more advanced and deals with JSON, XML, and CSV formats. As you can see, it is mainly used for formatting or parsing data formats like JSON. For example, if you receive data from a webhook and it is unorganized and not know how you want it structured. Next, we have the resource hub. Here, you can ask questions and find more info about integrations. Now, in my apps, you create custom apps, as you can see here, and this is a bit more complex. Under notifications, we have Zone US1. As you can see here, you can make multiple organizations. So for Zone US1, you can get notifications just for that organization. And this is the bigger selling point apart from the cost difference with Zapier. Let us proceed and connect ChatGPT and OpenAI to this platform, and we'll start building a flow together, a flow together to understand the details of creating a scenario on Make. So now, go to the top and click on the Create a New Scenario option. Now let us begin by connecting some of our API connections here. Click on the plus button and then search for OpenAI here and click on it. Now, I will set up OpenAI and it is all under one connection. For now, let us establish a connection with Make for the task of generating an image. Now, I will create the connection. And as you can see here, we require an API key. And then, there is no need for an organization ID. Now let us show you how to get your API key. Head to the OpenAI developer side and we will proceed to sign up there. Once you are here, go to the left side and click on this API key option. After that, click on the Create New Secret Key button here. Then, create your secret key here. Once you have it, go ahead and copy it. After that, go back to Make and then put the API key here and then click on Save. As you can see here, you can also rename it. So just go to Connections and name it something like My API Key. Now go to the scenario and we have successfully linked OpenAI to Make. Next, I will connect another software, which is Gmail. Now I will add a module search for the application and select Gmail. Now let us create the connection, then sign in with Google or create an account. Some connections are easier than others, so connecting with Google is easier because they have a big system. OpenAI may need a bit more setup. On that note, that will be it for this video. I hope you guys got some value. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.